welcome to the course on computer design of electrical machine uh, today we will like to have lecture 12 design of three phase induction machine the first lecture of induction machine well the outline for presentation of today we like to first give introduction then a little bit of history and this induction machine development then we will talk about application and we will start the design of three phase induction machine for the I mean deriving the output equation and stress and rotor air gap dimensions then we will like to have certain some exercise and numerical problems followed by reference. So, coming to the introduction of this lecture on in the induction motors, the AC induction motors are the most common motors used in the world they are re rightly referred to as main work force of the industry due to their wide and varied use in industry application induction motor also well prevalent in many household applications so the main advantage of the induction motor include the simple and rigid design low cost manufacturing low maintenance and direct online operation if required like then this is the classification of course all the electric motors uh, out of that as you can see on the left side with the AC, then we have asynchronous. This also asynchronous induction motor. Then we'll like to talk here now today about the polyphase, square cage, and wound rotor induction motor slide. Then, of course, coming to the history of this induction motor, of course, we we'll start with the Faraday law of electromagnetic induction given 1831 e equal to minus n phase d phi upon dt. Then the Maxwell, of course, equation for electromagnetics in 1960. I mean, these four Maxwell equation. Then Galileo Faraday's 18, um, 85 and Nikola Tesla 1886. I mean, they developed typically initially the uh, typically the two phase induction motor and, and later three phase induction motor. Like so, as we coming to history in 1889, Melo Kodas invented the wound rotor induction motor, and 1900 induction motor was ready for wide industrial use, and 1910 induction motor are used in locomotive propulsion system. Well, in 1900 to 1985, DC machine took over most of the sectors due to need of speed control. And in 1985, widespread introduction of IGBT based variable speed drive. And the modern day, it is the most widespread motor used in most of the applications. Like so it has a like a what improvement ever since have been better analytical model for steady state and design process and the better magnetic and industrial insulation material and cooling system design optimization that is both technical domestic and aesthetic methods are developed and improved drive control strategy and power electronics component efficiency well development of induction motors and drive for high speed and uh, high application and even the finite element analysis is also used for improved analysis and new and better methods for manufacturing and testing of induction motor are also developed so coming to the typical rating it is start from tens of watt especially in single phase induction motor and it goes ahead as high, high voltage induction motor of 80 megawatt on 11 kV and varying speed 2500 to 4000 with a good efficiency of 98.1 percent like also so you can just see how the rating has increased exponentially i mean over the years of this typically of induction motor so coming to some of the applications the um, I mean, a very important applications like industrial pumping system because it's a most robust uh, robot motor. I mean, like and uh, typically having a typically square cage rotor and three phase winding on the stator in general. Another major application is residential pumping system, submersible and overhead. Then the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning system, uh, typically for blower, a compressor motor, and chiller motors. Then, of course, the typically in electric vehicles, Tesla have used the three phase induction motor, and of course, uh, with the even the motor is developed in axial field flux config, considering along with the radial field flux. So, both the configuration, of course, it came now for even a, with the electric vehicle propulsion system, and you can see with copper bar, certainly it give a quite good high efficiency, hardly with the full load shift less than three percent order of that, like. Well, the other application have been like a typically in washing machine, then desk fans, coolers, then ceiling fan, compressor. Of course, some of the application takes single phase motors. 
uh, well other application in the hot and cold rolling mill heavy duty motors and then ball mills for mill application then electric cranes host lift system then industrial conveyor then and many more so there, there are plenty of applications of this three phase induction is called gauge induction motor. now coming to design of three phase induction motors so well there is a lot of literature as a reference book like the book of typically performance and design of alternating machines by mg say of course it's a revised edition 2022 but the books already published around 1957 also first edition the induction motor design handbook by van bolde and nasser published on 2009 then polyphase induction motor analysis design and application by by paul cochin in 1989 then the design of rotating electrical machines second edition by joa python and tap jotkan and were now in 2013 and a course of electrical machine type by egisani so these at least these textbooks covered a lot on induction motor design as a reasonable in detail there are however there are very other classified book also on design of induct three phase induction machine like so well uh, the other books induction to ac machine design by thomas elipo it published in 2017 then induction machine and their behavior by pl philips alger in 1970 and theory and design of small induction motor by cg wen in 1959 and design of small electrical machines by eson e hamdi 1994 then the induction motor is theory and design uh, select forth by practical methods of you know, by henry boy uh, that in 1903 so coming to the construction the brief summary of the construction of this motor a three phase induction motor essentially consists of two part namely the stator and the rotor the fixed stator core carries the three phase balance stator windings placed in the stator slot and two different types of rotor are usually uh use in induction motor and they are as follows the cage in the cage rotor that resembles the cage of a squirrel usually referred as squirrel cage rotor and a rotor that carry three phase winding place in the rotor slot the ends of which uh, are connected to a slip rings placed on shaft and is called a slipping rotor or wound rotor so the current circulated in the rotor winding because of the short circuit can be provided by slip rings in case of slipping rotor interact with the rotating magnetic field to develop the unidirectional torque as you can see the here the rotor and its valve cage rotor and wound even a slipping rotor both kind of the rotors are shown along with the stator here you can see the physical concept so you can call it in this construction we have a stator then a stator shaft and bearing then in induction motor part as a frame then rotor of slipping as well as squirrel cage so three phase induction motor has very simple construction compared to its ac or dc counterparts it is characterized by laminated stator short air gap no commutator very simple uh, rotor particularly the cage rotor uh, have a typically the frame enclosure stator and uh, rotor shaft and bearing well so you can just see exploded view of three phase induction motor it start from the side cover and you have a typically the um, frame then you have a stator with the winding as well as the rotor and then typically the other mechanical motor as well as the typically the terminal box like so this consists of total you can call it the parts of induction motor in open form like or open. so coming to first part like called frame or enclosure unlike dc machines where the frames are used as a part of magnetic circuit the frames of induction machine used for housing the stator core and winding and three phase induction motor are the most widely used mot motor available in low and medium size to make them highly cost competitive and frames are available in standard size like so the frames should be strong and rigid and as the air gap in induction motor is very small there is a reason why we have to keep very small because otherwise the magnetizing current increases substantially and power factor you have to pay power, power factor penalty so if the frame is not rigid the rotor may not remain concentric with Iterator giving rise to the unbalanced magnetic pole, like a causing physical, several physical problems. So you can see how the details of enclosure dimensions and they are standardized. The different dimensions, as you can say, the what horizontally A C A D A B A A K, and similarly vertically H D 
as well as, as so, so these dimensions becomes very important because for a particular frame size you should be able to take motor of any manufacturer so that you should show a particular specific location or a requirement like so here the are the different details of my typical main and auxiliary shaft extension that according to again in india we have is 1 2 3 1 and then of course degree of production ip 65 so these are the typically you can call it the specification of related to the details of enclosure dimensions like um, in detail like. then these are the other detailed dimensions which are given most of the typically standard and the series of frame size especially for the ie2 rating for a small rating induction motor of food mounted type because they are, these are also and of course courtesy from bharat bidli i mean like so these are typically the different frame sizes i mean according to the different standard like ic standard you can see here typically standard if we take 112 m i mean we can call it is a typically stack length of medium i mean you have a long short medium so all these dimensions of you can call it is available here i mean according to the enclosure or so and of course this frame size according to the speed we decide for a particular rating like so now coming to the construction of this with the stator core the stator core is built up of thin sheets of laminations which are insulated from each other by a thin coat of varnish and suitable slot either open or you can call it like open or semi closed rectangular or punch out on steel laminations and these laminations are stacked to give the required core length and are welded at several places around the outer cylindrical surface then you can just see how really the this stator core is there i mean you can see the stator core in between how the laminate sun is put and then after the winding how it really become a part of the stator and in the cutway also you can see i mean how this really the you can call it stator core is there along with the other parts of the this three phase induction model so coming to this as you can see in the photograph how it looks to occur this stator core without the lemon without the winding and then with the winding so stator core is made up several thin laminations of typically uh, I, you can call cast iron or high grade steel and they are punched and clamped together to form a hollow cylinder stator core with the slots as shown here and the stampings are fixed to the stator frame and each stamping is isolated from the other by a varnish layer and coils of insulated wires are inserted into these slots so you can just see typically the how is a really complete core is made you have a, a one lamination then you have a set of lamination large number of lamination and how they are stacked together and how they are put into typically let's say into the stator uh, frame and then put the winding on this the neck winding the smooth yoke and then the with the uh, ribbed yoke like um, so that clearly gives the photography of how the stator core is used in case of this stator only. So coming to stator frame, the frames of electrical machines are structured in which the stator core is assembled and they are of four distinct purposes. They enclose the core and winding, they shield the live and moving parts from human contact and from injury caused by intruding object or weather exposure and they transmit the torque to the machine supports and are therefore designed to withstand twisting forces and shock and they serve as ventilating housing or means of guiding the coolant into the effective channel so well coming to the winding i mean the winding material which are put in in the slots the copper is prim primarily used as a winding material and in low cost machine applications of copper winding can be also replaced with aluminum too and this is the relation i mean this how the typical resistivity changes with the temperature like and you can just see how the conductor are put into the slots i mean like here of course you have a different kind of the winding so because of this i mean there is a term we call it the fill factor that you cannot utilize the whole copper whole slot area for putting only the copper so there is insulation and there is a some space which cannot be filled because of the round conductors or different shapes of the conductor we put in put in the slot so we define a fill factor which depends on the, the wire gauge if wire gauge is high you have a then fill factor can be little higher side because you can keep the conductor with a smaller cross section or close to each other 
So as you, the cross section of conductor increases, certainly the left edge space also remains quite larger, unutilized. So these are typically the, you can call it the rated diameter of the wire diameter and the insulation needed on this wire. So every conductor have also insulation. We have almost like a two to three layer of insulation starting from each conductor, then on the coils, then followed in the slots, I mean, and with the liner also to so that, I mean, this becomes also important, however, it needs the less space, but it becomes important material, I mean, to decide the rating of the or output of the machine like. So, these are complete, I mean, you can call it the details of as a one table like. So, now coming to the construction of rotor core, the rotor is a rotating part of the induction motor and the rotor also consists of a set of slotted steel, silicon steel laminations pressed together to form a cylinder of uh, uh, in form for the magnetic circuit and the electrical circuit and the rotor is made of several thin laminations with every space bar which are made of aluminum or copper typically along with the periphery. So, in most popular type of the rotor is bulk cage rotor, these bars are connected at the end mechanically and electrically by the use of slip, slip rings and almost 90 percent of induction motor have spell cage rotor. The rotor consists of cylindrical laminated core with axial place parallel slot for carrying the conductor. So, you can just see how really um, silicon steel core is there with the laminations stacked together and how typically the, kick, the aluminum bar are die crusted finally into it with the end rings I mean which I mean and with the balancing rings also along with that like, which has mounted of course on the soft like. So, it becomes very robust construction. So, the construction of this type of rotor along with the winding resembles a square cage and aluminum rotor bars are usually die casted into the rotor slot which results in a very rigid construction. Even though the aluminum rotor bars are in direct contact with the steel lamination, practically all the rotor current flows through the aluminum bars and not in the laminations because during the die casting process there is oxidation layer which really provides the insulation between the laminated laminations as well as this bar like. So, you can just see how it is really I mean you have a aluminum rings as well as aluminum bars which are die casted with the typically steel lamination and you can see how they are put as a double cage also sometime I mean into the and with the different typically geometries like I mean and the actual actual rotor with the screwing. So, normally we provide the screwing to admit the typically slot harmonics which otherwise sometimes the motor may refuse to start due to cogging phenomena as a locking magnetic locking even at zero speed. So, to avoid that to eliminate the slot harmonics which are responsible for that we do some screwing as you can see how the slots I mean you can see are really bar into it are slightly let us say screwed. So, then you can just see of course here the another rotor cage rotor with the rotor bars I mean how they are placed I mean typically in the rotor and you have a typically connected with the rings all both the side like of this square cage rotor. Sometime of course, these bars are made with the aluminum uh, copper bar also, but of course, the processing and temperature raising I mean it has to go at high temperature like also. So, there are some practical issues apart from that the cost of copper is certainly much much higher than the your aluminum. I mean it goes almost like a typically the cost of aluminum goes only 12 to 13 percent only of the copper because the density of the copper is aluminum is one third apart from cost also one third. So, it become one nine for the same you can call it the volume of aluminum you have you want to put into the typically in the slot like. So, now you can see how the typically the rotor core of wound rotor induction motor looks like, how the winding are there, how the slip rings are placed and how the typically assembled rotor photographs is there. So, slip rings are either brass or phosphor bronze and they may be pressed together on a body of reinforced resin on a mill steel hub. So, uh, why typically we have a rotor core rotor wound with the three phase winding connected to the three slip ring and brush brush assembly and more expensive than cage rotors. Of course, it has a lower slot fields than the cage rotors because you are putting again the conductors, a large number of conductors into the root, typically rotor slot. However, in cage 
you are using only one die casted conductor in that. So, use in fast for lifting heavy loads requiring high starting power, popular use in wind generator also as a DFIG. And you can see by putting the actual resistance or control from the rotor side, you can modify the characteristic torque speed characteristic and you can see it specific application, especially it is very much suited nowadays for wind application, wind power generation called DFIG W5 induction generator type. So, this is the typical example how we have a W fed index generator so on the rotor. I mean, stator we directly connect through transformer to the grid, but rotor also we have a with the transformer with the filter followed by another voltage source converter and second voltage source converter, and they are partially uh, rated converter because this TFIG we run hardly with the 30 percent slip, and the speed varies for 4 pole to 1000 rpm to 2000 rpm, and we use the typically the gear here, three stage gear to increase the wind speed typically to around order of 1000 to 2000 rpm maximum typically and of course this reactive power from this converter feed from the rotor side I mean so that power factor of the stator maintain unity and the another converter is responsible to maintain the resealing voltage and of course typically have a bidirectional power flow with the grid line because if you are at higher speed it runs at super synchronous speed where the power is generated from stator as well as rotor and power is fed from the around 30 percent power at higher speed is really generated from the rotor side. And at uh, typically lower stage speed, 30 percent power is taken from the slip ring into the machine and from typically you can call it pass on to the stator side like. So, the this rotor core you can call it the stator designs have been much uh, have been much the same for most induction machine. The main design difference lie with the rotor design and rotor bar shape can be optimized based on the starting torque requirement and MI A and B rotor punching only suitable for rotor for inverter fed. AC machine. So, you have a, I mean, according to NEMA, different construction ABCD. As you can see here, the ABCD four kind of the rotor dimensions construction, like I mean, because they are somewhat deep, they are using more space or something, only some are shallow. So, the characteristic also changes the torque speed characteristic with constant grid voltage and frequency for these different motors also changes. I mean, class D have a very high starting torque and used for compressor kind of application. I mean like, but of course, full load slip is larger than followed by your A, B, C, D, the motor, different motors, how the torque is modified. So, coming to typically the square cage load motors, the uninsulated bars of aluminum of cop or copper that are joined together at the both ends by endings of similar conducting material and common practice is to die cast rotor to apply winding of cast aluminum the assemble rotor laminations are placed in a mold after with the mold molten steel aluminum with 6 percent to 12 percent steel is forced in under the pressure to form the bar and end rings and cooling fans which are also extension of end rings as you can see in the typical photograph like. So, in other design I mean like uh, copper or brass bar of various shapes are inserted into the rotor slot tightly projecting a short distance on each end of the core and these bars are then solder and solder welded or bridge to the end ring when we use really the copper bars. So, coming to the wound rotor second kind of the rotor winding employed for induction motor requiring speed control or externally uh, extremely high value of a starting torque or we use for like a W fed induction for wind power application. So, to modify the characteristic and to suit for wind. So, wound rotor has completely insulated copper aluminum winding very much like the stator winding. We normally wave winding is used which are used at low voltage because we want to keep the rotor voltage normally low because the power we flow through slip ring. So, slip ring and brushes contact certainly we have want to avoid the use of high voltage as it has the advantage that the number of cross connections between groups of coils is reduced and also it is compact and can hence provide a good mechanical balance and the winding can be connected in star or delta and the three ends are brought out to uh, from the slip ring on over which we have the brushes. So, this is typically you can call it we have a here the typically the way winding here. Coming to the comparison of square cage and wound rotor, a square cage motor has the following advantage as compared to with the wound rotor machine. So, no slip ring, brush gear, source kit, device, rotor terminals for starting rheostat are required. So, start delta start is sufficient for starting. So, in many cases we have a direct line starting or we have a transformer assisted starting. 
so it has a slightly higher higher efficiency because i mean you have a like a very robust rotor skull cage rotor so gas that is the advantage of skull cage rotor is that it is not possible to insert resistance test in the rotor circuit for the purpose of increasing the starting torque or to modify the correct characteristic from the rotor side so cage rotor motor has the smaller starting torque and large starting current as compared to the wound rotor motor like now coming to soft end bearing the air gap of the induction motor is kept short so it should not have a large magnetizing current and reduce power factor so a short and stiff shaft is used because of any mirror deflection in the shaft will produce a lot of irregularity in the air gap leading to production of un unbalanced magnetic pull and you can call it the noise and vibration so two sets of bearings are used to support rotating shaft and bearing are supported by the end flank as you can see here typically in the photograph so you can call it here i mean what is the typically effect is there it called the static eccentricity and other factor also i mean if uh, typically in shaft bearing so we have to put like a physical phenomena is caused by this if there is not proper shaft and bearing typically placing so unbalanced magnetic pull due to the static eccentricity and uh, magnetic forces generated from it like i mean also as you can see in the diagram so coming to the rotor shaft the rotor is mounted on the shaft using a bearing on each end and one end of the shaft is normally kept longer than the other for driving the load and some motors may have accessory shaft on the non driving end for mounting speed or position sensing device and between stator and rotor there exists an air gap through which due to induction energy is transferred from the stator to rotor the generator torque forces the rotor and then the load to rotate and the regardless of the type of rotor used the principle employed for rotation remains the same well you can just see here the chilcon steel laminated core with the end ring and aluminum bar with the balancing ring or and shaft so coming to the bearings the bearings are mounted on the shaft supported the rotor and allow it to turn and the choice of bearing arrangement is based on the following quality the load carrying capacity in the axial and radial direction over speed and duration rotating speed bearing life and other factor must be taken into consideration such as operating temperature dirty and dusty environment condition and vibration and shocks affecting the bearing in running and resting condition you can just see how the bearing look like on the typically closer to the cage rotor and shaft so coming to some of the more parts are to complete the construction details of induction motor are two end flanks to support the bearing two bearing one at the driving end another on the non driving end where the driving end will have the shaft extension for coupling the load loading machine on the shaft like two sets of bearing to support the rotating shaft and steel shaft for transmission transmitting the mechanical power to the load and cooling fan located at the non driving end to provide force cooling for the stator and rotor and terminal box on the top of the yoke or on the side to receive the actual electrical connection now coming to design of this three phase induction motor for dimension specification first we come to design specification so design of induction motor involves the calculation of overall dimensions namely the outer diameter and axial length and this is done with the use of out of output equation or we call this relation as output equation so next the design of stator involves the design of winding number of turns per phase estimation of number of slots teeth size of slots and estimation of length of the air gap so coming to typically the design of skull cage rotor involved determination of number of rotor slot size and rotor conductor calculation of bar current and end ring current and design of slip ring in includes design of rotor slot rotor winding design size and shape of slot etc and calculation of no load current and leakage reactances are required for determining the uh, determinants of efficiency so now coming to the typically main specification of three phase induction motor are as follows like rated output in terms of house power or kilowatt because it's a motor which should deliver the power on the shaft and then frequency in hertz voltage in in volt and speed in rpm connection of stator winding delta or star for three phase induction motor type of rotor like skull cage or wound rotor or continuous duty or short duty or intermediate duty then power factor cos phi and efficiency eta and class of insulation whether class f or class 
sea and temperature as well. Now, typically the guide to select of select to selection of the motor based on their product profile installation and closure is from the as you can see from Siemens is given here. You can see firstly the frequency uh, with the three phase type motor like three phase 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Then the rate will be 500, 600, 690, and duty standard duty or continuous duty S1 or according to DIN, and then type of production like IP55 or so, and the rated speed corresponding to number of poles, and then rated output power in kilowatt, and the rated torque, I mean P multiply this, and type of construction like index motor. Similarly, like the step 2 is the environmental requirement for the motor like ambient temperature whether less than 40 or above 40 or like I said altitude where you are located less than 1000 meters above sea or less than 1000 meters and factor 4 derating like an or determine the factor for derating 4 derating the factor C the information with full temperature on. Then step 3 is for preliminary selection of motors to determine the range of possible motors select the frame size and there were possible motors based on following parameter cooling method degree of production rated output rate speed and rated torque range and then step for determine the basic order of the motor the detailed selection of the motor determine the motor order according to the following parameters rated output rate speed rated torque and rated current for the selection of ordering the data and for the motor and then have already any fine and step size complete the motor order determine the is special versions and associated codes of the motor like is special voltage and type of construction motor production and degree of production winding and insulation i mean coolers and paint finish mounting and and technology and select the frequency of converter if required for or of number of converter and insulations select the cut, typically the cut, different catalog for that and these are you can call it standard design and typical i mean the data correspond to that it varies like all these including for large index motor with the electrical design characteristic like or so. Then the mechanical design characteristic, I mean like all these large induction motors as you can see in the table with the standard and type of module and that. Then coming to design specification, the following notations are supposed to be used in the design of three phase induction motor like Q, KVA rating, number of P, number of poles, efficiency, eta, stator current per phase, rotor current per phase, then stator transfer phase, rotor transfer phase, rotor total number of state slot, total number of rotor slot, then voltage peripheral speed, then specific magnetic loading, specific electric loading, number of slot per pole per page, number of state conductor per page, state slot pitch and length of air gap. So now coming to the let us say output equation as a part of the design. So we say the output equation gives the relationship between the input KVA of the machine and its main dimension. So KV rating of three phase induction motor is given by KVA equal to 3 V phase I phase into 10 power minus 3 convert in KVA where I phase I V phase I phase are the voltage per, per phase and current per phase of the machine. So we know that V phase equal to 4.44 F phi T, T phase T pH and KW where F is the frequency in Hertz expresses F equal to P n upon 120 or N S upon 60 into P by 2 or N S P by 2 where N S equal to N S upon 60. So N S is in you can say RPS and NS is in RPM. So, well, we can say NS is synchronous speed of the machine in RPS and NS capital NS is synchronous speed in, in RPM. P is the number of poles, phi is the flux per volt, TPH, the number of turns per phase, KW is the winding factor, KW equal to KPN into KD, and KD is distribution factor and KP is the pitch factor. Depends on the winding pitch between the two sides of coil side. How much is the angle? If it is less than 40 degree, then the factor certainly reduces less than one. And distribution factor comes because of distribution of the winding. So that is also always less than one. I'm like. So now coming to to simplify this output equation, KV equal to three into putting the value of VPH 4.44 F phi TPH KW into IPH into 10 power three. So specific magnetic B average is the average flux density over the whole surface area we define in terms of dimension. So, B average equal to total flux in air gap divided by area of the flux path in the air gap. So, that is total flux in the air gap is P phi, phi the flux per pole. So, there are P number of poles. So, P phi is the total flux on the surface and divide by pi dl that is the surface area where the P is the 
you can put number of poles, phi is the flux per pole and total surface area of air gap is phi dl, d is the diameter of the stator or you can call it at the air gap and I is the stack length of the machine. So, by then there is another we define the specific electric loading, we define as the RMS current, RMS ampere conductor per meter of armature periphery at the air gap surface. So, that is small ac total armature ampere conductor divided by armature periphery at the air gap. So, this comes as a 3 IPH into z upon phi d. So, as the 2 turns form 1 conductor, so and substituting z equal to 2 pH in the above equation, so we can get like ac equal to 3 into 2 into IPH TPH divided by pi d. So, now we can say that F equal to NS by 2 and phi equal to B average T pi into DL upon pi and IPH TPH equal to AC pi d upon 3 by 2. So, we define all the flux as well as the ampere turns in terms of typically the dimensions and average flux density and electric specific electric load. So, now coming to KVA that is 3 into 4.44 NS 3 by 2 into B average pi d l upon p into k w i p h t p h into 10 power 3 and if this equation get modified k v equal to 3 into 2.2 that 2 get cancelled out and into n p h we average pi d l k w a c pi d upon it 3 into 2 into 10 power minus 3. So, it becomes now k v equal to 1.11 pi square k w b average a c into 10 power minus 3 and d square l n into 10 power minus 3. So, the K V equation typically becomes C 0 D square L N S. So, where we can call it C 0, we call it output coefficient that is 1.11 pi square K W B average A C into 10 power minus 3 that is equal to like 11 K W B average A C into 10 power minus 3. Then you can call it the K V is H P into let us say from the power relation K V is equal to H P into 0.746 by N phi so, or you can call it K V equal to K kilowatt upon and phi and there is a typically you can call it the SN constant C0 versus S gap as the air gap apparent power. I mean you can see how this varies for different number of poles. So, if number of poles are less, so you can just see when this is quite on short side, but as pole increases, it increases higher side. So, you can call it now the output equation KVA equal to C0 d square LNS, this called famous output equation. And this our equation shows that for a machine for give KV, given KV rating, the volume d square L of the machine depends on two factors, namely the output coefficient C0 and the synchronous speed in RPS. So, rearranging it, we can call it d square L equal to KVA divided by C0 NS. So, you can call it this now coming to choice of specific loading for from this output d square L equal to KVA upon C0 NS. So, higher the value of C0 and NS the volume d square l decreases and hence the size of the machine decreases. So, mostly the speed is given as a specification that we cannot decide, consume, I mean customer decide that. So, therefore, to obtain the smaller dimension of the machine higher value of C0 must be selected. But since C0 is a proportional to B average and AC, so we cannot say, we can say that the size of size and cost of the machine decreases if higher value of B average and AC are used. However, the use of highest possible value of B average and AC will affect other important aspects like losses, efficiency, power factor and temperature rise. So, now choice of B average directly influence the various factors as shown here. Typically, the iron loss, both the component of iron loss, namely stresses and eddy current losses depends on the flux density and a higher B average increases the core loss and decreases the efficiency. Similarly, magnetizing current a higher value of B average results in a higher magnetizing current resulting poor power factor. As you can see here the selection how really it is affecting. So, typically overload capacity high B average means uh, large value of the flux per pulse. So, for a given voltage per phase lesser number of turns per phase can be used resulting in a reduced leakage reactance and lower value of leakage reactance increases the overload capacity of the machine. So, small B means good power factor reduce core loss small overload capacity, high B average is poor power factor, large core loss and good over load capacity. So, so moderate value of B must be selected like. So, now coming to typically again for choice other factors for selecting the specific level average load that is B average. So, advantage of higher value of B average is size of the machine reduces, cost of the machine decreases, overload capacity increases. Elimination is the flux density in teeth. 
that is the limitation that must not be more than 1.8 tesla or couple to tesla and flux density in the core should be order of around from 1.3 to 1.5 tesla so for a 50 hertz machines of normal design the value of b average lies between 0.3 to uh, typically 0.6 fiber per meter square for machine used in cranes rolling mill where the large capacity are required the value of 0.65 tesla is, can be used so the table b average for various type of induction machine type of induction motor like general purpose induction motor takes the b average 0.3 to 0.55 tesla and large overload capacity machine like crane mill rolling mill they use the flux density b average 0.6 to 0.65 large capacity high speed they use the flux density 0.5 to 0.5 to 0.55 so it can be noted from above till that b average increases with the increase in the rating of the machine just like the transformer so now coming to the choice of specific electric loading like ac which uh, unit is ampere conductor per meter a choice of specific electric loading directly influence the various factors as the temperature rise and overload capacity and volt rate so it causes the typically the uh, your increase in temperature rise reduce the overload capacity and typically the so value of ac depends upon the size of motor voltage of the stirred winding and type of ventilation and overload capacity desired so coming to like uh, the factors like temperature a large value of ac leads to increased armature armature couple loss and hence increased temperature rise and overload capacity a large value of ac increases the turn per phase and as the leakage reactance this reduces the overload capacity of the machine and the voltage rating for high voltage rating motors as the insulation space required is more the slot space will be less so if higher ac is selected then large armature diameter is required and this increases the size of the motor the value of ac varies from 5000 to 45000 ampere conductor per meter depending upon the capacity of the machine like now this is typically you can call it core losses for i mean the material property core loaded for m19 is cr0 steel at different frequency how it is affected and core loss of m15 is varies from with the 3% is silicon with the 0.5 mm thickness lamination so here we normally use 0.5 mm thickness lamination like so now coming to this efficiency and power factor so here the table shows and they will give the huge well values of efficiency and power factor for 50 hertz machine you can say if output power of physical cage is starting point 75 that's a 1/2 power and pole is for the power factor is typically efficiency is order of 72% power factor is of typically of 0.75 so coming to increase the rating of up to 75 kW and it gives you have a pole let's say typically fourth power typical efficiency goes 91.91 and power factor also goes 0.92 order of that so this gives the some idea and for slipping the motor normally little is start from 7.5 kW that's a 10 of power so typically the efficiency around 0.84 0.084 percent and power factor 0.84 but of course 75 kW machine again have a efficiency of 0.91 91% and power factor 0.92 also order of that so that's for four pole similarly you have data for eight pole also now you can call the efficiency and power factor for typically i mean for efficient motor ef2 and ef3 starting from 1.1 kilowatt or 1.2 kilowatt 1.2 kilowatt is 1.5 kilowatt is the typically or you can call it uh, this is uh, 2 hp and efficiency you can call it of uh, typically 78% then efficient one is 84% similarly for four pole i mean it goes like as i as 85 the different rating machine how the power factor efficiency are affected and you can call it here the efficiency and power factor characteristic so typical power factor and efficiency of the three page 60 hertz name a b type of induction motor how to vary with the different typically the speeds and how the efficiency how the power factor are affected with output power now coming to calculation of main dimension I means that's called the separation of d and l that is the diameter at air gap and length stack length of the machine so one relation of course we got from output equation we have to derive another relation to separate out d and l by assuming that suitable value of winding factor kw b average ac and efficiency eta and cos phi power factor the product of dl can be obtained from the output equation kv equal to c0 d square lns where c0 is 1.11 pi square kw b average ac into n power minus 3 that's equal to 11 k kw we have the ac into n power minus 3 so the separation of the product d square l into the d and l depends on the ratio l upon tau 
the L is the stack length and tau is the pull width, which is given as tau equal to pi d upon p. So, you can call it where we can call it lambda that is should L upon tau L upon pi d upon p. So, this is the one relation of course, we have from here another relation from output equation. So, we can separate out L and D. So, this lambda is equal to L upon pi d upon p that is L upon tau. So, in general the longer stack along the smaller stator bore diameter for a given torque leads to shorter stator winding and connection and lower winding loss and the low inertia, but the temperature rise along with the stack length may become important. And optimum value of lambda is highly dependent on the induction motor design specification and the objective function taken into consideration. And there are applications with the space shape constraints that prevent using a long motor. For some application, we are able to use reasonably long motor like a submersible pump. We will have used a long stack length as maybe typically like a 100 feet order of that, like for specifically for water pumping submersible applications. So, the following table gives the value of L upon tau usually used based on the design. So, design feature with the minimum cost L upon tau is normally recommended 1.5 to 2 and for good efficiency it is order of 1.5 and good perfect it is given 1 to 1.25 and good overall design it comes order of 1 and you can see how the lambda varies from typically for in terms of p by 2 number of pull pair. For determining the machine with the best perfect the empirical relation it is taken as a tau equal to 1 root 0.18 into L and where L is in meter may be used typically here in this relation. So, coming to typically now design of a stator of three phase induction motor. So, following factors are considered uh, in the design of a stator of three phase induction motor. So, first is the peripheral velocity. So, calculated value of the diameter d has to result in peripheral velocity less than 30 meters and is calculated like peripheral velocity equal to V s equal to pi d n s where n s is in uh, R p s. So, d has to be recalculated on a specific rotor construction is to recommend if the pole let us say the peripheral velocity exceed 30 meter per second. The following factors are typically considered in the design of a stator. First is the typically a ventilating duct when the length of the L exceed 16 to 18 centimeter, it is very difficult to cool the machine. So, has the radial velocity duct ducts of 8 to 10 mm are huge. In this case, the gross stack length is given as typically L g equal to L minus N d W d, where N d is the number of ducts and W is the width of the each duct, because that ducts have a typically not the ferromagnetic end to it. And net iron length becomes now L i equal to k s into L g, and where k s is a stacking factor, because you are stacking the large number of laminations, so k s always remain less than 1. So, now typically then factor c is the design of stator winding. The stator winding is of physical case motor is Design for delta connection in higher rating as this machine is to be generally started by star delta starter. How the star connection can be adopted if other methods of starting are available like variable frequency die. And for wound rod induction motor, state of winding will be either star or delta because this is not to be used for conversion from star to delta. So, maybe a delta connection is acceptable. Now, coming to, to find the terms per phase of state of winding, the state of voltage per phase is VP. Per phase, which is from name play 4.44 FIM TPH KW. So, from TPH, from this becomes P phase divided by 4.44 FI KW. So, the stator transfer phase, I mean, comes T phase. So, the winding factor KW is 0 0.955 for the full pitch winding with the 60 degree phase is as a typical example. Otherwise, you have to calculate the winding factors from typically from the distribution as well as from phases, typically from the your pitch factor. So, coming to like area of cross section of a stator conductor, so stator current per phase will be I phase equal to kV into 10 power minus 3 divided by 3 into V phase and area of conduct stator conductor will be S equal to I phase upon delta. The current density in the stator conductor delta is assumed between the 3, 3 to 3 and 5 depending upon the type of cooling. Like sometimes it is even more, if you have more effective cooling and machine rating is higher. So, now you can call it like typically coming the motor enclosure and cooling. So, totally closed seen with only the uh, ventilation through convection. So, I mean, I mean current density is selected 1.5 to 5 and it all and if it is a totally fan cool or over fan cool that is current density can be taken 5 to 10 ampere per millimeter square and totally enclosed liquid cool hollow conductor 
So it can be from 10 to 30 or 20 to 40. So current density in state of conduct for different type of cooling, I mean varied form, your typically type of enclosure and cooling methods like, I mean if better cooling is there and liquid cooling is there, you can certainly dissipate more the heat from the your state of conductor and you can take a higher current density. So coming to typically area of cross section of state of conductor, the current density delta in state of conductor is to be to 5. So we can call it what are the advantage of higher value of current density. It causes reduction in cross section, reduction in weight and reduction in cost and disadvantage of higher value of current density increases the resistance, increases the copper losses, increases the temperature rise and reduction in the efficiency. Now coming to design of state of slot, the performance of the induction motor depends on shape of state slot, size of state slot and number of state slot. So coming to like first the shape of state slot. So two types of stator slots are generally used in induction motor stator, namely open slots and semi-closed slots. And sometimes instead of semi-closed, tapered slots are also used. As you can see here in the diagram, how it is like open slot. Open slots in these type of slot, the slot opening will be same as in the width of the slot as shown in the figure. And assembly of the slots and removal of the winding for repair are easy for these type of slots. But these slots will lead to higher air gap concentration factor and poor power factor and use of open slots avoid excessive slot leakage reducing the leakage reactance. So coming to semi closed slot as you can see from the air gap side you say small close and winding input in the semi closed slot with the conductor portion. So semi closed slots in this type of slot, slot opening is much smaller than the width of the slot as shown here and hence the assembly of winding is more difficult but the air gap characteristics are better than the open slot. Now coming to tapered slot, as you can see tapering on the input side as you go towards the outer side, you have a larger the width of the slot. So tapered slot like semi-closed slot, tapered slot also have an opening much smaller than the slot width, but the slot width will be varying from the top to uh, bottom of the slot to the uh, with the minimum width of the bottom of the slot as shown here. Now coming to typically or number of the straight slot, the following guidelines may be used to select the suitable number of stator slot. So first guideline is the number of slots should be selected as so as to give the integral number of slot per pole per phase generally for a small and medium size motor. The number of slot per pole per phase varies between 3 and 5 and the narrow range it varies between 3 and 4 and slot pitch for open slot lie between 15 to 25 mm and for semi closed slot it varies from 20 to 25 mm. For double layer winding the number of conductor per slot must be also an integer even integer. So now coming to number of slots, another factor is stator slot pitch like air gap surface divided by total number of slot, slot that is pi d upon SS and total number of stator conductor is 3 into 2 into TPH. So total number of stator conductor per slot becomes ZSS into 3 into 2 into TPH upon SS. Right? So now coming to the typically crowns and crowns of higher number of slot numbering, advantage is reduced leakage reactance and reduced to pulsation losses and higher overload capacity and disadvantage increased cost, increased weight, increased magnetizing current, increased iron losses, poor cooling and increased temperature rise and reduction in efficiency. Now typically size of the state slot, the slot area is occupied by the conductor and insulation and out of which more than 25 percent is the insulation. So space factor of the slot is defined as a ratio of copper area divided by slot and the total slot has the area of the Stator slot is given as HD of stator slot that is equal to H equal to copper area per slot divided by space factor ZSS into AZ divided by space factor. So slot this is slot space factor so obtained will be between 0.25 and 0.4 and after obtaining this area of the slot dimension of slot should be adjusted. I mean this typically as you can see typically in semi closer out here how the different dimensions are there like opening 3 millimeter and ahead of the AG is only 1 millimeter than the slanty 3 millimeter and total DSS and VS. So tooth width and the slot width at the gap surface should be approximately equal and the slot should be too wide to give a, a thin teeth. So the width uh, of the slot should go at should be so adjusted that the mean flux density in the tooth lie between 1.3 tesla to 1.7 tesla. 
and width of the teeth will be not be large and if it is just in narrow and deep as you can see figure so the dimensions of the slot opening for semi slot in millimeter so now coming to stator winding resistance the stator winding resistance for phase can be calculated rs equal to rho that is into l l l mts tph upon az the mt l mts is the length of mean turn of stator winding which is a 2 lg lg plus 2.3 tau plus 0.24 meter and lg is the gross length and typically az is the area of the cross section of the each conductor now area of the slot comes to as equal to copper area per slot by space factor and zss into az divided by space factor and as is the area of the slot and az is the area of each conductor so space factor varies from 0.25 to 0.4 lower value can be used for higher voltage machines to allow the more space for insulation as you can see in the typically in the dimensional line so the slot liner as shown in the figure is leatherized or micronite paper on thickness of 0.75 to 0.4 mm for a 400 or to 11 kv machines as you can see here how it's, how the slot liner is put and for double layer winding there are there is a 0.25 mm micronite separator between the two layers of the typically the qual side now coming to stator teeth design once the slot dimension is fixed the two dimensions is fixed however it must be checked to find out whether the air gap flux density sorry flux density in the teeth is within the range of order of 1.8 tesla, tesla so minimum tooth area have to be decided phi m upon 1.8 and as the stator tooth is tapering towards the bottom the flux density is calculated at one third of the height from the narrow end of the to the flux density at one third height from the narrow end of the teeth is calculated as follows typically the diameter at one third height from the narrow end is d dash equal to d plus 1 by 3 h ts where that is the height typically of the slot into 2 and h s t s is the height of the tooth and slot which at one third height will be t t s dash pi d s dash divided by s s s and total width at the section b bt dash equal to t tau dash minus bs and area of the one stator teeth is 80 dash equal to bt dash into li and area of the all all stator tooth per pole is 80 dash equal to bt dash into li into number of teeth per pole and mean flux density in stator teeth is bt dash equal to phi upon a t dash like so now coming to stator teeth other part of design Tooth area per pole is the number of slots per teeth per pole and net iron length into width of the teeth and area of the teeth per pole is 8 at uh, dash equal to bt dash into li into number of teeth per pole so mean flux density in stator teeth bt dash equal to phi upon 80 dash and the minimum width of the stator teeth bt dash equal to phi m divided by 1.8 that is b bm into s, s upon p into li so now you can call it that by the design of stator now design of stator core there is a some solid portion below the slot in the stator and this depth is called depth of the stator core denoted by normal dcs so this can be calculated by assuming suitable value for flux density bc in the stator core and it's assumed to vary between 1.2 to 1.4 tesla so you can call it cross section of stator core as given here the different dimensions you have a dcs that's a stator core depth then your slot depth then the your diameter at the air gap and the total outer diameter how to is shown so flux in the stator core phi is equal to phi m by 2 half the flux goes into one side of the and area of the core is ac equal to ac equal to phi m upon 2 bcs so flux through the core and flux in the stator core and ac equal to li into dcs now coming to li into dcs equal to phi m upon 2 bcs so dcs is phi m upon 2 bcs into li and outer diameter of stator lamination will be d0 that is do equal to d plus 2 depth of stator slot plus depth of stator core that's a d d0 equal to or do equal to d plus 2 dc ss plus 2 dcs like so that's the outer diameter of stator core so now coming to design of air gap the air gap length is one of the main factor which determines the performance of the machine as it is part of the magnetic circuit and various factors in flushing the length of air gap is shown here Uh, typically the power factor unbalanced magnetic field overload capacity pulsation 
losses, cooling and noise and many other factors that is shown here. So, coming to first as a power factor, I mean like the out of the various magnetic parts of the rotating machine, the air gap consumes maximum MF to allow the flux through it. So, if the air gap length is more, I mean greater will be the ampere turns required for magnetizing the air gap and this will increase the magnetizing current and reduce the power factor. Therefore, to have a good power factor, the air gap length will be much must be kept small as you can see the effect of air gap on the power factor in two cases magnetizing current high or magnetizing current low in two cases like how this is really changing the power factor. Now coming to overload capacity the zigzag leakage reactance that forms a greater part of total leakage reactance it reduce the large value of air gap and reduced leakage reactance means the large overload capacity as the you can see the large diameter of the your circle diagram. Overload capacity is M n upon L and it is smaller the leakage reactance a larger is the circle diameter and leading to larger overload capacity of the machine. Now, coming to the another parameters like pulsation losses, with the large length of air gap, the variation of reluctance due to plotting is small and the zigzag leakage flux introduces pulsation losses and noise and large air gap will reduce the zigzag leakage flux and hence that reduces the pulsation loss. Now, coming to fourth factor for to decide the air gap length, so that is unbalanced magnetic pull. So, if the length of air gap is small, even a small deflection or eccentricity of shaft will produce a large irregularity in the length of the air gap and is, re is responsible for production of the large magnetic pull, which has the tendency to bend the shaft leading to fouling of rotor with the stator. And if the G is large, a small eccentricity will not be able to produce the noticeable unmagnetic pull. Now, coming to fifth factor of cooling. If the air gap is large, the cylindrical surfaces of the rotor and shader are separated by large distance. So, this will afford better facility for cooling at the gap surfaces, especially when a fan is fitted for the circulation of air on the side of the typically uh, for air circulation. Coming to the sixth factor of noise, the principal cause of the noise in induction motor is the variation of reluctance of path to the zigzag leakage flux to ensure that the noise produced will not be a Objectionally, if it is necessary to make the zigzag leakage as small as possible, and this can be done by doing increasing the length of gap line. So, coming to hence the length of air gap is selected considering the advantage and disadvantage of large air gap length. So, advantage are increase overload capacity, increase cooling, reduce unbalanced magnetic pull, reduce uh, in tooth pulsation, and reduce noise, and disadvantage increase magnetizing current and reduce power factor. So now coming to typically in designing the length of air gap following empirical are used a Lg equal to 3 into 10 power minus 3 tau on root 2 into P and another is Lg equal to 0 0.2 plus 2 on root DL by two different scientists by T professor Lip and professor Say and both are in numerator and both are in so where the pole pitch is uh, top P equal to phi D of 1 P. And certainly, you can see air gap length of scale gauge in the motor versus pole, which how the, it varies really here. It is given in millimeter, or you can say inches with respect to the different poles. So, in designing the length of air gap empirical relation, L is equal to 0.2 and plus 2 under root DL for a small machine where D and L are in millimeter, so sorry, meter, and L is equal to 1.6 under root DL minus 0.25 for large machine. In millimeter. So, you can see how the length of air gap for four pole machines are there, where D is given, LG is given. I mean, how with the diameter is affected typically for length of air gap. Now, coming to typically design of the skull cage rotor and wound or slipping rotor, I discuss here in this section and design coming to first of a skull cage rotor. The following factors are considered to be in the design of a skull cage rotor of three phase induction motor, number of rotor slot, rotor bar current, area of rotor bar, shape of rotor slot and ring current and cross section of end ring. So, now coming to first as a selection of number of rotor slot. Foremost important requirement in the design of rotor is the selection of that the number of rotor slots in accordance to the number of history slot already selected. If, uh, if improper combination of history slots are selected, then machine may produce various peculiar phenomena like cogging, crawling, noise, vibration harmonics and synchronous cup. So, these effects are due to the harmonic field which may arise due to the improper choice of slots irregularity in the air gap and saturation in of magnetic fields like. So, you have a number of slot selection here therefore, 
on the sum whole the difference of s s minus s r s s is state slot s r is rotor slot should not be equal to 0 plus minus p plus minus 2p plus minus 3p plus minus 5p plus minus 1 plus minus 2 or plus minus p plus minus 1 this should be avoided i mean because of the you can call it the number of rotor slot for clawing sr must lie between 70 to 130% of hs for cogging sr should not be equal to hs otherwise it will cause interlocking sr should not be hs plus 3 sr should not be equal to 3p 6p 9p or 12p and for to avoiding synchronous cup sr should not be equal to sr ss plus minus p sr will not be, sr should not be ss plus 2p or sr equal to ss plus 5p and for noise vibration sr should not be ss should not be equal to ss and should not have difference should not be plus minus 1 and similarly plus or plus minus 2 or plus minus p minus 1 and sr minus should not be plus minus sp plus 2 to guideline these are the guideline for sort of slot so you have a lot of restrictions for selection of state slot to avoid these physical phenomena which are otherwise present in this is called cage rotor now coming to typically after selection of rotor slot the rotor bar current will be determined by assuming that the rotor mf is equal to around 85 percent of state mf and equivalent rotor current referred to stator is i1 cos phi and the stator mf corresponding to rotor current is 3 times i1 cos phi into tpa so considering cos phi to be 0.85 the num rotor mf can be taken as 85 percent of state therefore rotor mf is 0.85 stator mf and number of rotor bar will be n be equal to nr sr equal to number of total salt and ib is the bar current and we can call it rotor m equal to 0.85 stator m and number of rotor bar to n b equal to s r and number of rotor slot i b equal to rotor bar current so rotor m f will be equal to i b into s r upon by 2 we got trans total slot are s r so trans will become s r by 2 and into i b so the cage is assumed to have a full phase winding s r bar so they can be assumed to be connected in pair whole pitch apart to form s r by phases with the one turn e and you can call it stator m three IPH into a TPH, so IBR, IB SR by 2 will be 0.85 3 into IPH TPH, so IB become from here 0.85 into 6 into IPTH, IPH and TP, TPH divided by SR, so this gives you bar current and now find out the area of rotor bar, this could be calculated by assuming the suitable value of current density for the rotor bar, the choice of rotor current density influences the rotor resistance and has the performance of the machine and the higher resistance rotor have a good starting torque but higher copper losses aluminum loss and poor efficiency so higher value of current density will result in a lower conductor area and get resistance with low current density you the rotor resistance will be less giving the poor starting torque but good running performance so there is a contradictory format like so hence for a judicial choice of the current density delta has to be made for giving good starting torque and running performance to get a good value of delta uh, should be between 5 to 6 millimeter square and area of the bar will be then a b equal to i b upon delta b so the rotor slots shape of rotor slot the rotor slots for skull case rotor may either be closed or semi closed no insulation is provided between rotor bar and the rotor slot so we can first talk about like a closed slot a closed slot shown in next slide are generally used for a smaller machine and a smooth rotor surface obtained with a closed slot give the more quiet operation they also give larger leakage reactance and reduce overload density. So you can see how the closed slots are of two different types like circular and you can call it like elliptical slots are shown here which are used like typically in rotor of cage rotor. Now coming to another shape that semi closed slot. The semi closed slots are shown in next figure because of the shape they are deeper compared to the closed slot giving more leakage reactance in lower parts of a large starting torque at the top of bar this increase the ratio giving you good starting torque as you can see semi closed slots how it looks like either typically elliptical or circular type of the slots on um, case bar with the semi closed nature like so you can call it the rotor slots are further semi closed also can be of many kind or totally closed so you can call it rotor bar width so the geometry now depends on what torque is characteristic and the starting torque is needed as you can see the how it looks like the level is done with the and how it looks like the rotor, nature of the rotor slot like different slot. Now coming to rotor slot type, the rotors with the closed slots are giving performance to the motor in the following way. As the rotor slot is closed, the rotor surface is smooth at the air gap 
and hence the motor draws large lower magnetizing current and reduce noise at air gap characteristic are better and pitch leakage reactance reduce spreading current and overload capacity is reduced and undesirable and complex air gap characteristic from the above it can be concluded that the semi closed slots are more suitable and hence are employed in the rotor now coming to entering and cross section area of entering so let's consider a fundamental mf wave in the gap for two pole pitch as shown here in figure the rotor bar will cut the flux as shown here so as you can see how the mf and how the flux movement is there in the from straight to rotor like so you can call it the it can be observed that at the point where the current is maximum in bar it is zero in the end ring but at the point where the current is zero in bar it is maximum in the end ring so maximum value of the end ring current equals to the sum of current of conductor over the half pole pitch and maximum value of end ring current will be equal to i max equal to average average current divided by bar do number of bars over a half pole pitch so you can call it i equal to 2 upon pi ib into sr upon 2 pi and that's sr into ib maximum divided by pi b pi p so rms current of bar then can be ib equal to ib max of by root 2 at the bar the channel channel and i max sr ib under root 2 upon pi p so assuming a slightly higher value of current density for the entering the area of entering because cooling is better so can be calculated i a equal to i upon delta e delta e can be assumed between 5 to 8 ampere per millimeter square as you can see in the diagram how it looks like the entering slide now coming to the design of wound root wound or slip ring rotor as you specified earlier the rotor winding of a slip ring rotor has a three phase balance winding either connected in star or delta the following factors are to be considered in the design of wound or slip ring rotor of three phase inductive motor i mean as a number of rotor slots, number of stunts, rotor current and conductor area, size of rotor teeth, and depth of rotor core. So, coming to first to decide the number of slots, winding is such that it results in integral number of the slot per pole per phase, and fractional slot winding may also be used with number of slots as multiple number of phases and pair of poles. The number of rotor slots should never be equal to number of straight slot to avoid the cogging, and number of slots per pole per phase is generally taken between 3 to 4. It may also be taken to 2.5 or 2.5 for fractional winding. Coming to number of turns in the rotor uh, winding, that is TR can be determined on the your induced MF equation. So, ER upon ES is KWR TR upon divided by KWS into TS, where TS TR is the number of turns of stator and rotor respectively, and KWS and KWR are the winding factors for stator and rotor windings respectively. So, TR will be KWS upon KWR into ER. In divided by ES into TS, where ES is the voltage, stator voltage per phase, and ER is the rotor voltage per phase. Now, coming to the area of rotor conductor, the full load rotor MF is taken 85% of stator MF, so IR into TR equal to 0.85 ISTS, so IR is equal to IS, TS upon T. So, area of the rotor conductors is found to, to is find out by the assuming a suitable value of current density, and in order to avoid excessive rotor loss, the current density in the rotor. It is an almost equal to the shader and rotor. Round conductors are used for small motor, but the large motors it becomes necessary to use the bar conductors. So now coming to size of rotor teeth. When the designing the rotor, the care must be taken to ensure that the flux density in the rotor teeth does not exceed 1.7 Tesla for taper teeth. The width of the teeth is minimum at the root, and the flux density here must be less than the limiting value. So minimum width of the Rotor T T W T R equal to flux per pole divided by maximum available flux density into slot per pole into net iron length. So W T R equal to pi m into P divided by 1.7 SRLI. Now coming to depth of rotor core, the flux density in the rotor core is B C is kept equal to the stator core density is equal to 1.2 to 1.4 Tesla and D C R equal to pi m by 2 divided by B C R into L I. Depth of rotor core is the, the inside diameter of rotor lamination is di equal to dr minus 2 into like it, dsr plus dcr. Now, coming to typically objective questions so, air gap length of the three phase inductive motor is given by uh, by you can call it same uh, MGC method is 0.2 plus 200 dl ml where dl m are meter air gap length of three phase inductive motor is given. A lipo method a 3 into 10 power minus 3 tau into under root 2 p mm 
now coming to higher value of ampere conductor per meter of induction motor results in a lowest lower overload capacity and with the increase in pole numbers the stator core length will be will decrease and higher choice of magnetic loading in induction motor results in four power factor and assuming the that the cost per kg of copper is thrice the aluminum there is a percentage cost reduction by replacing copper winding with aluminum assuming the density of copper and thrice the density of so that comes only 11.11 percent now the slot area for radial slot section of induction machine military providing the curvature it comes 816.36 millimeter is for you can find out from the typically from the solution given here coming to the eighth question for induction motor slot cross section in previous question a single layer fractional slot consider winding is used a number of conductors per slot can be filled with the awg 14 unsulated wire and r round with consider the slot takes 30 percent comes to 74 from the calculation if you really do from this like um so now coming to question 8 with this so from this you can select the for the awg you can find out cross section here and you can do the calculation which comes as a slot area and then transfer total runs 274 now going to if number of conductors in the above slot is increased 500 and then wire is replaced with the w19 the slot factor will be here from this calculation comes to be like a 40% I mean taking all these dimensions into account the solution to consider the two machines of same design with the r dimensions ratio k to 1 and having a same speed plug density and condensation the kv input of machine will be k to power 1 as it is given in the solution here like now coming to the question 11 for general induction motor the stator to plug density is not expected to be n plug density greater than typically from more than 1 point as large you can see on the nip of the your magnetization characteristic like for the general purpose induction motor air gap plug density is not expected to be design at plug density greater than 0.6 tesla so for the general induction motor the rotor pore plug density is not expected to be design at plug density greater than 1.2 to 1.4 tesla for general purpose induction the stator core density is not expected to be design greater than 1.2 to 1.4 tesla so now we coming to some sold numerical problem the is the losses in 11 kilowatt three phase a 4 kv 50 hertz 1000 RPM index motor R I square R for 950 watt. I iron losses are 500 watt. Friction voltage are 110 watt. Find the output losses and efficiency of the similar motor design with the each linear dimension 1.5 into linear dimension. So, so compare the value of efficiency of the two motor. So total loss here is uh, all three losses 950 plus 500 and 1560. And efficiency given here or output is given 11 kilowatt 11,000 divided by 11,000. It comes point. 876 87.6 percent for this of friction voltage to be 110 upon your 11 kilowatt 1 percent only. Now the continuing the solution output varies as a fourth order of the linear dimension. The output will be a four second motor 1.5 to power 4 into 11 as 55.7 and square and losses vary as the cube of the dimension. So you can calculate the all the losses which comes typically around 56.19 part. The efficiency is now 50. Uh, thousand fifty five thousand seven hundred divided by fifty is only so efficiency increases nine to ninety point eight three from typically or eighty six seven point two six percent. So that's the advantage increase that I mentioned for going higher rating. So second example is one point one kilowatt three phase fifty hertz fifteen hundred delta connected induction motor has stator board equal to point one five millimeter and the core length L equal to point zero six millimeter. Estimate the main dimension of a three phase three phase Uh, 50 hertz, 1000 rpm delta connected motor winding with the same loading as the previous one, and the efficiency and power factor are same. I assume the L upon tau ratio, same L. So first machine, I mean, and first one is the first machine, second is the first machine. So the current speed is typically for 1500 by 625 rpm. Number of poles now comes four, and S2, I mean here typical 1000 rpm. The number of poles are six. So now pole pitch for first machine comes to Pi d upon p that's come point one one eight meter and l upon tau it comes point five one and output from output equation you can typically take a ratio of both so you get d square l two d square two l two comes six point eight into n power minus three meter cube and that comes finally typically number of poles are six so l upon tau is point one so keeping this value you get a relation between l two and d two that is zero point six two seven d two. 
and from this you can find out d2 equal to 0.294 and l2 comes finally 0 0.078 like now coming to question 3 a three phase inductive motor has a 56 resistor roll with 8 conductor per slot and 7 rotor slot with 5 conductor per slot find the number of resistor and rotor run find the open circuit voltage across the slipping circuit both resistor and rotor have a star connections and a voltage of 4 applied to resistor the SS is 56, Z upon SR is 5 and ZS upon SS is 8, so E1 equal to 441 root 3 volt and SR equal to 70. So now straight on surface you can find out T1 equal to 50 into 8 by 2 by 3, that comes around 75, total run per phase comes around 59. Giving formula, straight on per phase is voltage is 250. 40 divided by root 3 254.03 volt and rotor strain it will be e2 equal to e1 t2 upon t1 that comes to 199.8 volt and rotor voltage between slip rings at this root 3 190.8 that's 346 volt coming to question 4 find the main dimensions number of transfer phase number of stator slot and conduct 15 kilowatt 3 phase 2 pole 450 at 2800 10 rpm is called gauge motor having an efficiency 0.88 and full load power factor 0.9. Assuming space angular regulating 0.5 Tesla, space angular regulating 235,000 ampere per meter, taking the rotor peripheral speed at 20 meter per second, use star tilde starting and no ventilating gaps are required. Assuming state of all for phase 3 and winding factor 0.5. From this, all these data, we can find out like C D square LN is equal from this and uh, output coefficient which comes 1.3. 131.312 and n is equal to 50 rps and from t square line we can find out it comes 2.884 10 power minus 3 meter square and from peripheral speed we can find out typically another relation between d and l and from these two relation we get the d equal to 0 0.1273 meter and l equal to 0 0.177 meter from d square l. So now coming to turn per phase phi m we can file calculate the phi m flux B average AP, P average phi DL upon P, keeping a value it comes 0 0.01769 Weber and turn per phase will be phase divided by 4.44 PWF phi M and putting the all value it comes T S equal to 106.653 equal to 1 uh, 0 8 turns like and slot per full phase is given 3, so total number of slots are 3 into M into P, so it comes 3 into 2 into 2. 3 equal to 18, total number of stator conductor is 6 into PH, that is 6 into 108, 6, 48, and number of conductor per slot is 48 upon 18, 36, and these are typically all data required in this calculator. So, coming to typically like question 5, and the main dimensions number of stator slot size of conductor, stator, and air gap of 10 of power, 15, 3 page, 50 hours, 15 and RPM is called gauge motor, use start delta. Starting and the following data average plug density in air gap 0.45 Tesla, ampere conductor per meter 20, 25,000 ampere per meter, full load efficiency 0.82, full load power by 0.85 lagging, finding factor 0.95, slot per pole per phase 3, and total stack length to pole per phase 0.1.5 and current density 4 millimeter per square. So, putting the typically for getting a maintenance sum for output frequency D square length which is a 10.17. 70 kV. So, from this we can find out C0. 11 kb kw bab ac putting the value it comes 118.18 and n is equal to f of 1p that's some 25 rps and from this we can find out d square l that comes 3.62 10 power minus 3 meter square and we have l upon top l upon pi d upon p given 1.5 so another relation we can get l equal to 1.5 pi d is 4 so once we know d square l and we know this relation we can find out the value of d it comes 0 0.145 and l comes 0 0.171 meter and flux per pole we average by d we can calculate it from 8.7 to 10 power minus 3 ever and the number of turns per phase we phase 4.44 kw we get this is around 18.2 and from this we can 224.9 that's come 225 and instead current per phase comes i p equal to kvh kvh into 10,000 divided by 3 ph and comes 8.594 ampere and current density considering 4 ampere per meter square conductor size comes S equal to I upon delta that comes 8.5 so 94 by 4, so it comes S equal to 2.15 millimeter square. Now, select typically given a slot per pole per phase factor equal to M equal to 3. Total number of slots in stator will be for 3 into, into M into P, it comes 36 slot. Total number of stator conductors 60 S comes 1350. 
and number of conductor per slot 13 to the part 60 from 37.5 round off to 38 and 38 conductor per slot actual turns from T is equal to 38 and 36 by 6 to 28 and actual conductor from Z is equal to 6 and 16 to 1368 and a gap length is 0.2 plus 2 under root dl so putting the value it comes 0.51 millimeter so now these are the unsolved problem i mean and with the answer so you can solve in the similar manner all these problems and these are the references used for this lecture all of induction machine and then thank you for any question there i'll be happy and thank you very much